The situation for biodiversity loss is getting worse and worse. We're seeing an accelerating loss of biodiversity. And that may well lead to some devastating collapses in certain ecosystem functions. There's so many different things happening simultaneously. There's climate change, there's fragmentation, there's the massive increase, continuing increase of the human population and its demand on agricultural land, both for food and for fuel purposes. And all of this, in a sense, is the perfect storm. It's all coming together. Around the world, approximately a quarter of the world's surface has been completely transformed. In other words, has either gone into monocultural uh, agriculture and forestry or else into urban areas. So a full quarter of the Earth's surface has been transformed in a way which is very hostile uh, to biodiversity. Reefs are already in trouble from the release of toxic chemicals and fertilizer runoff, from people who fish inappropriately with things like dynamite and poisons. Corals are bleaching, and with an extra warming of two degrees, they might go extinct. Uh, polar regions, especially in the Arctic, is melting at a, at a rate that is faster than any time in recorded history. Uh, species in the mountains are moving up. Species in very arid environments are, are suffering. We have to stop dumping all our wastes in the atmosphere uh, because if you keep changing the climate, then any reserve you set up is only temporary before it no longer houses the species you're trying to protect. The tropical forests are a good example. There are some models that predict that much of the Amazonian forest could uh, disappear due to severe drought in the future due to climate change. And that could also have uh, big impacts on rainfall. So actually by cutting down forests or losing forests due to climate change, that actually alters rainfall patterns not only in Brazil but can also modify rainfall patterns in parts of the United States. It's going to be a very very dramatic change and we could even go up to as many as four degrees Celsius or even six degrees Celsius increase and at that rate species all species including us will have never have experienced a temperature that warm to have to live in Humans are consuming about half of all the net primary production on the world, either directly or indirectly through the other species. And that's a stunning thought that one single species is appropriating to itself one half of the production of the world. When you get up to that level of consumption, you're getting quite close to a, 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 a tipping point. I think we're seeing quite a lot of evidence of that around the world of progressive large-scale failures of ecosystems approximately three quarters of the world's fisheries are either at their limit or have already collapsed. There's some good examples like cod fishing off the east coast of, of North America where those fisheries declined, they stopped fishing them and they still haven't come back. So we know we can push some systems beyond a threshold uh, from which they can recover. Perhaps one of the biggest changes we've seen is the transition in certain areas from really large fish-dominated systems to jellyfish-dominated systems. So if you get down to uh, ecosystems that have a very small number of species, there's very good evidence that those uh, ecosystems function uh, poorly compared to those uh, systems that are f relatively rich in species. Biodiversity, when it starts to unravel, unravels at an accelerating rate because of all the species interactions. You, you're basically pulling uh, elements out of this, this, this uh, house of cards uh, which, we've, which, which ecosystems consist on, and finally they start collapsing under their own. So the problem that we have 
is that you can cross some thresholds and then start moving toward a completely new, unfamiliar, uh, new state, and you might not even know it for 50 years. But once you've crossed it, you can't say, never mind. Like, what we do in the next decade or two commits the long-term future to a radically different status of sustainability that we're leaving to our children, grandchildren, and the legacy for the rest of humanity and nature.